Canandaigua Lake on a beautiful fall day to talk about trolling with Seth Green Rigs. Seth Green Rigs are a way of deep water trolling that allows you to put several lures at several different depths. It's fairly low tech. It was invented in the 1800s right here in New York's Finger Lakes. This is a beautiful part of the country with big deep lakes, pretty hills, and vineyards and wineries. Seth Green was an actual guy who invented this setup and opened the first fish hatchery in the United States in Caledonia. I wanted to go over the techniques and rigging and maybe we'll catch a fish or two by the time we're done. The defining trait of a Seth Green rig is a one pound lead ball that takes your leaders way down deep. You can't use just any rod. It has to be stiff, but not too stiff. You're dragging a one pound weight around so it does have to have backbone but you want the rod to have enough give for whenever you hook one and it starts thrashing. You'll find these old wooden handled boat rods all over the place. Most are junk. You could buy a barrel full of them for about fifty dollars and then cannibalize the parts to make one good rod. You want an overall length of at least six and a half to seven feet and it's a really good idea to have roller guides at the base and also at the tip. The reel is a Pen 309. You can get a fancier or more modern reel, but there just isn't any point in it. There's a jillion of these around you can buy used for peanuts and they last a lifetime. Look for ones with these screw-on braces because a boat's vibration can undo the reel seat. Now the line is a little more complicated. You can use braided Dacron, but I like how wire slices through the water without picking up too many uh, spiny water fleas. This is a 30 pound test multi-strand steel wire. A 1000 foot spool will be good for two reels. The wire ties into a series of bead chains and lengths of Kevlar braid. The bead chains are where we clip our leaders on. And you go from wire to a bead chain to a 15 foot length of 80 pound Power Pro, which is actually thinner than that wire, believe it or not. Uh, then another bead chain, another 15 foot length of Power Pro, and so on. When you get to the very last bead chain, you have a 3 foot length of 20 pound monofilament, which goes to a big swivel which goes to a one pound lead ball. I've seen guys use three pound weights for fast trolling, but that's way too much. Seth Green Rigs are mostly for slow trolling Lakers with bonus fish being rainbow trout, browns, landlocked salmon, and even the odd monster smallmouth bass. If you want to fast troll, use a different method. You keep your leaders wound around a slotted pool noodle. They're 15 pound mono with these little clippy things on one end with a cheap barrel swivel and on the other end we put a high quality ball bearing swivel. You tie them about 15 feet long but for the very last one that you clip down by the lead ball it's good to keep it short like 6 or 10 feet. This makes your life easier when you're netting a fish. Here's a selection of lures that work. Flutter spoons are common and work great. They're different than regular spoons in that they're made from thin, light metal. That way they'll give you, give you good action at one mile per hour, the way that a Daredevil or Clio spoon can't. I don't know if you can see that, but the metal of the Daredevil is quite a bit thicker than that of the flutter spoon. You can use flat fish style plugs. Here's a store-bought one. I made a couple of homemade ones out of wood. Jointed Rapalas work good. One deadly thing is the flasher fly combination. This is a spin doctor. You got a couple feet of 15 pound mono and I like to troll with New England style tandem hook trolling streamers. I clip these down on the bottom leader right by the lead ball. They're deadly. When you're slow trolling for Lakers it's good to use a trolling plate. Uh, it helps you slow the boat down so your engine can idle down without stalling. 
you attach a cord to this lever, lever, give it a yank, and the plate comes down and acts like a brake. These don't cost that much, but if you don't have one, you can use a drift sock or even a, a drywall bucket with holes drilled in the bottom. Let it out on a rope behind you and it'll slow you down as well. With Seth Green rigs, you also want to use rod holders that are good and sturdy. The rod's heavy, the weight's heavy, and if you hook a big one, that's heavy too. So I'm out here in deep water. I got my slow troll started, and I got my meatball clipped on, and uh, we'll start setting out the rigs. Got our first leader clipped on. I'm going to lower it down to the next seat. Now we clip our second leader on. Put a little Sutton spoon on there. Now we'll lower it down to the third seat. So I got three leaders on. I'm only going to run three leaders per side. I'm just going to lower this down a little bit and leave it there until I get the other rod set up. So we're close to our depth. I know from experience that I can expect to find fish anywhere from 70 to 100 feet down. So I'm following the coastline, staying in my depth. And on Canandaigua Lake, it's kind of tough because it's a very steep-sided lake. You have to stay right on the wheels so you don't uh, run aground or whatever. But uh, I'm going to steer and keep, us, keep it in our depth while lowering the line down until it, I feel it bounce bottom. So once I have the rods out there and trolling at their depth, I like to put these little clip bells on there. Because usually I'm facing forward and the rods are behind me, so... They'll let me know whenever I get a bite. Another little trick I do is uh, that once I've pegged my depth, I'll put a little piece of yarn onto the wire and uh, it won't harm anything and it'll tell me how much wire to let out each time I have to redeploy my rig. So I'm happily trolling with my both rods out and I'm in my depth. And I'm trolling along the coastline, trying very hard to keep it within a range of depths. It's tough on Canandaigua Lake. The sides of the of the lake are very steep, and you know you can quickly find yourself in very shallow or very deep water, and you don't want to snag the bottom. It's okay to drag the bottom with your meatballs, but you know with all the rocks down there, I have lost tackle before. You just want to keep your eye on the graph and keep it in a range. Right now I'm trying to keep it in about 90 feet of water. I've seen a few blips down there. Nothing to write home about. This time of year, it being fall, the fish do tend to congregate around the points. And uh, there's one up ahead of us there. It'll actually take a, a while to get there because we're only trolling at a mile an hour. but. You'll pick up strays too. Oh, I got a nice big blip on the bottom right now. Curious to see what happens. A couple of nice big blips. It's just a nice time of year to be out here. The fall colors are real pretty. And there's really no water skeeters or jet skiers or anything like that out here. So even though it's a weekend, you feel like the lake belongs to you. I'm seeing some bottom blips rolling along, so that keeps you alert and optimistic. I want to make sure that my rods are keeping contact with the bottom, so I'm not passing over the tops of the fish. Sometimes these blue sky days, you get all your action in the first couple hours of daylight, then they shut right off. That very well might be the case today, but boy is it a nice day to be out. Now, when you're slow trolling, 
I learned from a friend of mine, you always want to go with the wind, or at least at a shallow angle to the wind, if you can, if you can manage it. Because when you're steering into the wind, it's hard to play a fish and keep it pointed straight, <clears throat> and you're just fighting it all the time. And just a small amount of, of play on the throttle will make a huge difference in your speed. So instead of fighting the wind, you're better off working with it. So you just set up your troll, get the head of the run that you want to work, and when you troll your way past it, you pick up all your lines, motor back up to the start, and run it again. Oh boy, I got one. Uh, it might have been, might have been, oh yeah, I got one. <laughs> boy, I came out here expecting nothing, and real quick I'm into a fish thrashing down there. So when you're playing a fish with this type of trolling you're better off cutting the wheel for deep water because you don't want to start dragging bottom while you're trying to reel a fish in. So that's what I'm doing now. Oh, this is fun. I haven't been on Canandaigua Lake in several years. This is a lot of fun for me. It takes a while to crank them in, doesn't it? Pretty typical size Canandaigua Lake lake trout, between three and four pounds, I'd say. They're just real pretty. They don't get enough credit. Down he goes. How about that, huh? All right, so I'm slowly letting my line down so I can get to where I feel it bouncing off the bottom. Not quite there yet. Alright, so I'm locked and loaded. And I'm trolling my... There, there's another point not that far down the shoreline from where I am now. And I fully expect to mark fish and maybe even catch another one by the time I get to the end of this run. Oh! I just got a jingle on my clip bell. I don't know if that was a strike or if I dragged bottom. Have to watch that one. I am marking fish down there. We're on high alert. Yeah, that rod is not, it has a characteristic bounce when you're dragging across bottom, and that's not what I'm seeing, so I think that was a fish strike. It's kind of common when the rod that's on one side of the boat will get all the strikes. Never quite sure why that happens. I mean, you could even switch the lures from one side to the other, and you'll still get all your fish on one side of the boat, not the other. No, nope, there we go. Well, oh, he came off. Yeah, he came off. It's not a good sign when you get short strikers like that, because, uh, what often happens, you start out in the morning and you'll catch fish. And then as the morning wears on, they bite more tentatively and you'll get short strikes like the one we just had there. And uh, then by the time you get to lunchtime, they stop biting altogether. So, so short strikes are halfway house to no strikes. Let's hope we can get some more before we're done. So the camera was off, I had this little guy take the top leader. I'll let him go. Well, thank you everyone for joining me on this fishing trip. Maybe it'll help a few of you get started.